<laughs> I'll put it right there a little bit. Good morning. Hate to break up the fellowship, but good morning. I'll try it again. Come on. Good morning. There you go. Good morning, to everyone. And uh, is it September or November? Kind of crazy weather out there, but uh, good. Uh, it's a nice sunny day today, and we have uh, great weather for this Lord's Day, and we thank you for being here and joining us. Uh, if you're joining us on Facebook Live or YouTube this afternoon, please like and share that page and uh, enjoy that, and uh, we look forward to seeing you here back at service as soon as you can. Uh, for our guests and for our church family members, please fill out one of the connection cards. Connection cards are there in the pew in front of you. Also, uh, pass those to the center aisle. For our guests only, we have a new QR code that you can scan there on the screen, or it's there on the back of the Pathfinder, and then you can fill out all your information on our new online connection card. Also, I uh, just want to give you a brief update while you have your Pathfinder maybe there in front of you, a few from our prayer list. Kenny Morphy uh, unfortunately passed away. He is the nephew of Betty Ruth Dittmore. His funeral services will be this Wednesday at Beaville Funeral Home in Beaver Dam, and that's at 2 p.m. this Wednesday. Also, uh, Janet Cleghorn uh, was a friend of Jamie Arney, passed away, and her services were held yesterday in Aaron, Tennessee. Also, please uh, have these on your prayer list and maybe a couple of additions and uh, updates. Terry Spray, who we mentioned last week, this is Jerry Jernigan's stepfather. Uh, he is in the hospital, and unfortunately, he has cancer, and uh, they're uh, uh, trying to figure out plans for that and what procedures they want to do for that. Also, Betty Jernigan um, is in the medical center of Bowling Green for some tests on her heart, and she is in 5A19. So, Miss Betty Jernigan is in 5A19 medical center of Bowling Green. Also, Amanda Sinks is at home. This is uh, Miss Jennifer Batson's sister. And she's undergoing home health care at this time uh, from her recent hospital stay. This will come in Wednesday night. We're having a meal at 530, a church meal. We're having barbecue. And uh, the church will be providing barbecue and buns. We need everyone that's coming to provide sides and drinks. So if you can provide drinks, two liter drinks, maybe a gallon of sweet tea, whatever you'd like to bring. And then the sides to go along with that, chips, close saw, uh, beans, whatever you think is a good side with barbecue. We do not need desserts. We had some desserts left over from the Young at Heart banquet last night and then the gracious outpouring for the funeral meals this week. Um, we had some desserts left over from that. So we do not need desserts, but we do need sides and drinks for this uh, Wednesday at 530. And then our move series lesson will be at 645. And we have Steve Baggett coming back to be with us this coming Wednesday night, and he's excited to return. Uh, hopefully, I, I think he's planning on bringing Miss Pam, so we get to see Steve and Miss Pam this coming Wednesday night and hear the last of our quarterly speaker series on our move to topics, and he's going to be talking about moving to serve him. So please make plans to be here at 530 for the meal, and then 630 we'll have our devotional. And then 645, Steve will be talking to the adults and also the teenagers that evening. Also, um, it just kind of fell on that. I forgot to put a slide up there, but it kind of fell on the same night, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, Angela Vaughn and uh, Dennis, I believe, are both going to West Kentucky Student Center this Wednesday night to uh, serve the meal up there. So if you'd like some more information on that, you can see Angela and Dennis after uh, worship services today about that. LAS Leaders will be starting up. We'll be getting our kids amped up for LAS Leaders that will be held uh, next April uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, we're going to have an information table and start that kickoff next Sunday, November 13th. So all the kids, uh, please be aware of that. And uh, we'll uh, get you more information about that in the Pathfinder and other uh, avenues uh, here at the church. Uh, this coming uh, Tuesday, or excuse me, no, Tuesday, November 15th, uh, Lewis Manor uh, has invited us, and uh, we're going out there. The ladies' Bible class is taking a trip out there, and we have two ladies out uh, at Lewis Manor Assisted Living, and that is Miss Earlene Carpenter and Miss um, 
Miss Ann Byron, excuse me, I about forgot her first name, and they're out there, and we're going to go have a meal with them at 12.30. Now, ladies' Bible class will be at 11 a.m., and then we're going out there at 12.30. If anyone wants to go out there and have lunch with us, you are more than welcome to attend, and you are invited. Uh, please uh, bring your um, um, money. If it's $15 a person, we have to pay for that. But if you'd like to go, you can see one of the ministers or Miss Nell Jordan. We need to get those numbers in by this coming Tuesday, Wednesday to Lewis Manor for the, our trip on November 15th. So if you'd like to be a part of that, please see one of us and we'll get you set up. Today we'll be starting collecting money and donations uh, for our Thanksgiving food boxes. We plan on this year helping out people that we've helped out through our benevolence program here at the church building. Um, it's kind of a little bit different, but we're hoping to have uh, as many boxes as we can. So if you'd like to donate to that, you can turn your money in to myself or one of the other ministers or get it to the office and we'll take care of that. <clears throat> also, we'll be hosting Room in the Inn again this year. Uh, our host nights will be Sunday evenings and we'll be getting that in January and February. So we have every Sunday night in January and February except January 1st. So our first night will be January 8th. We need volunteers to help with that. We need people to cook, we need people to stay, we need help people to clean up and do different things. So we're having a volunteer meeting on Wednesday, November 30th at 6 p.m. And we'll hold that in the fellowship hall. That'll be for church services at night. And we'll continue to share more information about that in the upcoming weeks. But please make note of that Wednesday, November 30th for that volunteer meeting. And also this year, we're going to have a breakfast with Santa on Saturday, December 10th. From 8 to 10 a.m., this is hosted by our Young Families Ministry. But if you'd like to help with that, uh, you can see Eli or, um, or um, um, excuse me, um, I'm, I draw it up blank. Travis and Jenna, sorry, Travis and Jenna Utley, who's in charge of that and also that ministry. So if you'd like to help with that, they're going to be needing volunteers. And we'll have some sign-up sheets for that as well coming up. And that'll be here before you know it. Uh, Thanksgiving's coming up quickly and then our Christmas uh, activities as well. Thank you again for joining us this morning. If you please stand, Colton's going to come lead us in our singing this morning. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be kingly brightness so our faces display your likeness ever changing from glory to glory mirrored here may our lives tell your story shine on me shine on me
Good morning, church. I get the privilege of praying with you all this morning, leading us in a prayer. So if you'll please pray with me. Lord, we want to thank you for this day that you've generously given to all of us. Thank you for waking us all up this morning and blessing us with another day on your creation. We thank you for the opportunity to freely gather together and worship you. We thank you for being our God. We want to thank you that you're in control and not us. We give you all praise and glory, and we thank you for rescuing us when we were utterly helpless. We all deserve death, but through your abundant love and mercy, you offered us life through your Son. I pray that we all remember this throughout our time of worship together, that you help us to clear our minds of worldly matters so that we can worship you wholeheartedly and give you all the praise that you deserve. All praise and glory are given to you forever, Lord. Amen. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. Finding our forgiveness here, we in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here. He breaks the bread. The cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. We are now a family. the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. So, as I was thinking about um, this part of our worship service um, earlier this week and this morning, and it just kind of uh, uh, struck me how blessed as believing Christians we really are. Um, do you ever just, and I'm sure you do, stop and think about the glory of God's creation, the universe, the magnificence of it. <clears throat> Brent and I talk, are the skies getting more beautiful or do we just notice it more as, as we age? Um, I saw on Facebook a post um, from California, it's been in the past week, of the beauty of the sky. 
and it was the exact same sky we saw here that same day. Just the magnificence of God's creation. And then beyond that, God gave us the Bible, kind of, um, which lays out <clears throat> how to live our lives while we're on this earth, how to govern our lives. Just the majesty of what's in the Bible, it has everything we need to know about how to live our best life. What a wonderful thing the Bible is, and it's available to all of us. And then finally, he gave us Jesus Christ, who came to this earth, lived in the flesh. Steve, we talked about it, uh, the Son of Man, uh, this morning in his uh, Bible class. And that makes reference to Jesus becoming human in the flesh. He was crucified on the cross for the remission of our sins for one reason, so that someday we can experience the full glory of heaven. Um, so as we remember um, Christ and the sacrifice he made, let us just be mindful of what's ahead of us as Christians when we can experience the full glory of heaven. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we, every week, have an opportunity to remember your son, Jesus Christ, that he came to this earth. He lived a perfect life. He laid down a perfect example for us to follow. And Father, at this time as we Remember, let our minds just go back to that sacrifice uh, that Jesus made on the cross for us, and that by doing so, uh, that we might be able to partake of this bread, which represents his body, in a way that is uh, meaningful and beneficial to us as Christians. In Christ's name, amen.
Would, would you bow again with me, please? At this time, Father, we continue our thanks for this cup, the fruit of the vine. That's emblematic of the blood that was sacrificed on Calvary's cross, again, for the remission of our sin. And just be with us, Father, that we may be able to uh, reflect on that event and that we may be able to uh, do so in a way that's meaningful uh, to our souls and respectful and appreciative of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. In Christ's name, amen. So, so this being the first Sunday of the month, um, we're going to pass a collection plate twice, and I'm going to um, uh, pray for uh, the collection uh, both times. Um, as you know, um, and think back about what I just talked about uh, uh, how amazing this universe is, how amazing our guide uh, from this earth to heaven is in the Bible and finally for the sacrifice that Jesus Christ um, made for us. In his um, great commission, one of the things he uh, commands us to do um, is spread his gospel to the rest of the world. Um, um, we are so blessed in Franklin and the Franklin congregation that um, uh, we have a beautiful place to assemble, that we can encourage and edify and build up and support each other and just um, uh, do God's work um, in the community we live in and where we have opportunities to do God's work. Um, so this is an opportunity for us to uh, give back a portion of what God has given to us. And um, uh, that we'll be able to take that money and we can do things that will glorify God and uh, bring us to a more unified place of uh, love and support within in the church. 
the Franklin Church has always um, been a great church to support the financial needs. We've kind of taken on um, uh, everyone counts, every dollar counts. And it started out a few years ago that we just asked people to give one dollar, uh, that we could take that money and direct it to, um, um, to a need or a family in need uh, in our community. And I was just looking at earlier in the bulletin, we collect about $2,000. Um, and you might notice there are not 2,000 people um, in, in this room, but it's just a tribute to the love uh, and care that this congregation has. Our Father in Heaven, we're so thankful for the opportunity that we have to, uh, uh, of all the material blessings and how much you've uh, blessed us, uh, with the ability not just support ourselves, but to uh, promote your cause and to, to help others. And Father, that in itself is a great uh, a work and a, and a great mission, and we just uh, appreciate the opportunity uh, that we have to support this congregation financially and also uh, to help people in our community. Uh, in need. So uh, bless our uh, givings in Christ's name we ask. Amen. Our reading this morning from God's Word, 1 Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. In Christ alone my hope is found, he is 
my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. If you wouldn't mind, please stand for the next two songs. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. I have a living hope. God has a plan for me, of this I'm sure, of this I'm sure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation, I know I can stand secure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Your word is faithful, mighty in power. God will deliver me. Of this I'm sure, of this I'm sure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. <clears throat> Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you, singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, Singing Alleluia, Alleluia. 
ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Singing Alleluia, Alleluia. Please be seated. Good morning. We have several visiting with us today. Thank you so much for coming our way. What an honor to have you in our assembly this morning, to have you worship with us. Thank you so much for coming. Um, didn't we have a good time last night? Those who were able to attend the Young and Heart Banquet, we had such a great time, good food. We enjoyed our fellowships. We talked about favorite memories from the past and, and looked at some slides and pictures of things from the 60s and 70s and just reminisced about some things. We just had a wonderful night. Thank you so much for making that happen. Very special thanks to Stanley and Charlotte South on the hard work they did on on making that happen. Thank you so much. And for those young adults, they prefer to be called Dash. Uh, they waited on us. And thank you so much for making us feel, feel special. Thank you so much. You know, um, in January 3rd, uh, night of uh, 2021, I almost said 1921, <laughs> we displayed our, our, our theme. And it was hope. You remember that? Hope for today. Hope for tomorrow. Hope for a change. And you know, we had just uh, come out of 2020. And we were looking forward to this year. And we were hoping to return to a better year. We were hoping to return to a normal life. We were hoping to return to a, a good measure of health. And you know what? For the most part, really, we did. When you, when you think about uh, what happened that year, and, and some were living in fear, you remember that? How hard it was to get going, to, to get motivated, to, to get out, to stir. But yet, we sort of did all right. And then we thought about 2022. And our theme was to move, to move with him to move for him, to move towards him, to move to serve him. And we sort of use Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that says, And we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. So as a church family, our goal was to move, move with him, move in everything. And so we challenged the congregation, if you remember the first Sunday, of 2022, we challenged everyone to spend some time every day in Scripture. And several of you agreed to read the Bible through in a year, and we, we ordered 26 new Bibles that were written in chronological order, and, and you started that process 
of reading the Bible through. And I know several of you are right on target with that. And congratulations. I couldn't wait. I had read mine through, you know, and I, I started again. I, I just really uh, enjoyed that challenge. And, and so I'm just so proud of you for reading your scripture through. So during that first quarter, Brother David Hamilton came and he brought us some lessons about moving with God. And, and he, David expressed one of the keys to advancing the gospel is for the church to be made up of individuals who consider it their task to work in the ministry. And that was a long thought. And that was a long sentence. But it goes right along with our theme. And we do have to work. And we do have to work hard. And it reminds us of that scripture that David read so adequately for us just a few minutes ago from 1 Peter chapter 2. We are living stones being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices uh, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. He says later in verse 9, but you are a chosen people. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. So we moved with him. And then in the second quarter, our theme was to move for him. And Walt Lever came, and he brought us a lesson. And he shared several things with us. And some of the things we talked about was that there was a common goal among believers. That it was our job to glorify God and to spend eternity with Him someday. And that we had a common lifestyle. And if we walk in the light as He is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. There's also a common sacrifice. We do give up some things in this earth. For something that is greater. We, we give up time. We give up money. We give up some pleasures of this world. For things we know that will be better. And then we have a common value. A common goal. Common worldviews, Common habits. Common traditions. That bind us together. And then Brother Joe Beam came in the, in the third quarter. And talked about moving towards him. So now we're going to talk about moving to serve him. And I'm just so excited about next Wednesday evening. It's great to have Brother Steve Baggett come and, and talk to us again. And I hope you've made plans to come and enjoy the, the meal with him. And if you want to continue, I know Kirby said we didn't need desserts, but I like cookies. And if you want to go ahead and just be thinking about that, that'll be fine. <laughs> no, we we've, seriously, we have enough desserts. But I'm just ready to hear him. We spent countless hours working on the ministry programs. And so now we're ready to serve him. We're ready to serve Jesus Christ through all the programs that we've designated. It's complete. Many of our ministries are up and running. And you know, we expect everybody to participate in this. We want everybody to be ministers. I want you to think about that and consider that. One of the keys to advancing the gospel of the church is made up of those that will minister. Individuals who will consider this task and go to work rather than ha having a congregation that expects maybe the paid staff or maybe the elders to do it for me. We all need to be ministers. According to the New Testament, the purpose of the church leadership is not to do the work of the church, but to equip the church to minister to one another. If you read in the book of Ephesians, in chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up it's the task of the leadership to train God's people for ministry we're all ministers 
And under the Old Testament law, the Jews understood that there were certain things that only priests could do. Only priests could offer certain sacrifices. Only priests could do certain rituals. Only the priest could enter the Holy of Holies. But at Jesus' death, the veil of the temple had been torn, symbolizing now that all of us have this ability to go before our Heavenly Father. We're all priests. We're, we're all ministers. And in 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, that we've read twice already, we're being built into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And that is our responsibility. John added in the book of Revelation, in, in the first chapter, he says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, has made us to be a kingdom and priest to God and the Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. So how do we consider the church? How do we consider this work? How do we consider the ministry? Well, what if we considered it this way? What if we considered the church just to be a pyramid and, and, and we let the elders or, or we let the staff do all the work? How would that be? Well, it doesn't help much with vision, does it? It doesn't help much with growth, does it? That's why I like to consider the church as being a circle whether we met, where we minister to everybody. And then in our circle, we have all these other little circles that are doing their jobs and they're keeping up with one another. And so this enhances our spiritual growth. And if we're busy working, it will help us grow in a spiritual life. And so there are times, you know, when we may need to ask ourselves, do I need to be stretched in some capacity? Can I do something that I normally don't do? What about visiting the nursing home? Or mine was, I was asked to teach six-year-olds. I've taught adults for so long, I didn't know how to teach six-year-olds. I had to think about that a little bit. I had to, had to work on that, and, and, and it worked out just fine. But I had to change a whole lot. But I was uncomfortable with that because I hadn't taught children in a long time. What about volunteering for things? What about doing humbling jobs like cleaning up after a banquet that we just had last night? But you know, all of us are going to be asked to do things. We just finished with our ministry fair. And the ministry fair that we just finished was a recruitment tool. Many signed up to work in many areas. And I hope you signed up for things that you really like and that you really want to do. So let's ask ourselves this question. If I, if I signed up to work in a specific area, have I been called to work? And I'm afraid many of you haven't. I'm afraid many of you have signed up in an area and the ministry leaders have not called you and said, hey, I'm ready to get going. I'm ready to plan. I'm ready to accomplish this goal I'm ready to, to get after the task that's ahead of me. I hope you're not waiting for that call. I hope that everyone's busy. You know, the Young at Heart banquet that we had last night was a ministry. It was well planned. We had such a good time. And that's just one of the many ministries that we have going on here. So I hope that you'll consider this work and take it seriously and get busy. And don't be negative. Be positive. And let's grow together spiritually. You know, when we think about 2020, 2021, and think about this year, you know, things are better. We, we get better all the time. Um, we open Sunshine Street again. It's been meeting every Sunday. We had closed that earlier. We return to after school Wednesday. That's where the teenagers come. Or, or EI gets in the van and goes and picks them up. And they come and they can have fun or work on their homework. And then they all go out to eat 
And then they come to worship services that night. And then we had Bible Bowl. We, we returned to Cookville this year. Twelve attended that. And we had a, a group that finished in sixth place in the Bible Bowl. We had Lads to Leaders. Where we're training young men and young women in service to their Lord. And they attended that and did well. Our youth group is alive and well. Doing great. We went to CYC in February. And if you look around you this morning, you'll notice that, that a lot of our teenagers aren't here. Well, they're at Big Reedy this weekend on a retreat. And we pray for their safe return back to us today. And we hope that they had a, a great and profitable weekend. Vacation Bible School. Our attendance was up in Vacation Bible School. Didn't we have a good week? We went to church camp. Had 153. Our numbers were up. Um, one got COVID and had to go home early and we won't call Steve's name you know we'll, we'll let him get by with that but we had a great week six new families identified with us in 2021 and only one this year but we've got to work on that we've got to recruit some more families in 2021 we had five baptisms this year we've had 13 you know things are going good the Young at Heart or the Abundant Living Group made a trip to, to Glendale. Just had a wonderful outing together. The ladies attended a group in Pigeon Forge called Transform, which was just a great weekend for them, and they grew together spiritually. We've, uh, we've helped a lot of people with benevolence. I want you to know that. Um, we've helped so far through October 140 cases. Now, sometimes that's families, sometimes that's individuals, but 140 thus far because of your generosity. Um, people serving people. That's where Stephen and others will go down and, and serve lunch twice a month down, down at the through the center here downtown. Uh, Everyone Counts, where we took up money just a few minutes ago to help folks. Do you know that through October, not counting today's contribution, but through October, you all have given $17,000 for Everyone Counts? And just think about the families that we've been able to help. So you see, we're growing momentum. Things are, are, are good. Good ministries are happening and I hope that you feel good about what's happening here at Franklin. And, you know, just a few minutes ago, we handed, not a few minutes, a few weeks ago, we, we handed out this booklet, and it, the front of it looked just like that. And on the front of it, it's got the scripture of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we're all God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You see, Paul's focus in this scripture was, was not to tell us about our original creation, but our spiritual recreation in Christ Jesus. So feel real good about your ministries. Feel good about what we're doing. Verse 10 t teaches us that we're saved by grace. And if we're saved by grace, we're going to want to do good works. We want to get busy. And it'll set us apart for those who are not. God gives us new life. So we want to please him, don't we? He gives us new life, so we need to give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise that he so richly deserves. So let's get busy. Let's get started. Let's get motivated. Let's go to work. Let's work together. And you know, if you consider your life this morning, and there's no evidence of good works, then consider your relationship that you have with your Lord today. James says that as a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 15 and 16, it says, Speaking the truth in love, we may grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ, 
From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does his work. I like that word ligament. What? <laughs> that ligament means that we're followers of Christ. And as we're followers of Christ, we can have fellowship with believers. And so that's why we need you to be committed. That's why we need you to work hard. This is how we grow. This is how we build each other up. This is how we mature spiritually. Look what the writer of Hebrews says. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward good works or good deeds. How do we do that? How do we motivate one another? Well, let's just be committed. Let's be committed to coming. Let's attend Bible school. Let's think about life groups. Let's do home studies together. Let's do recreational things together. Let's do service projects together. Let's go on mission trips. Let's minister to those that are hurting. Let's just be committed to the fellowship of each other. So it is our goal to move forward in everything that we do. So let's move with him. Let's move for him. Let's move towards him. And then finally, this quarter, let's move to serve him. Have you been moving to serve in your Christian walk? Consider that this morning. Or are you struggling with a real relationship with Christ? You know, the Bible tells us that he wants us to be serious about working for him. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Live for him. Your time on this earth is a gift for God. Let's use it well. In the book of Corinthians, we are laborers together with him. I like that. Let's go to work. God bless our efforts this final quarter. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blessing of this day. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you for this church. Thank you for our ministries. We pray, Father, that we'll go to work and we'll build each other up, that we'll be edified and we'll grow spiritually. Continue to bless us in the name of Christ. Today, we're going to sing an invitation song. If there's any way we can help you, we bid you to come while together we stand and sing. Just as I am without one plea.
welcome with open arms. Praise God, just as I am, just as I am. I would be lost, but mercy. to glory in your cross, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, I come broken to be mended, I come to be healed, I come desperate to be rescued, I come empty to be filled, I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb, and I'm welcome with open arms, Praise God, just as I am. Praise God, just as I am. Bow with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for the privilege and the freedom that we have to come to worship this morning. We want to bless the sick, especially the ones we know. We want to thank you for the ones that are fighting for this freedom, for this country, that we may have the privilege that we come out this morning. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for the seasons, and above all, we thank you for Jesus. Go with us, guide us, and help us bring others to Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> 